This would be a review ER Net 227. Uh, this is week three. This is the week we had the snow. So we only met on Thursday because we um, didn't have school on Tuesday. So we're finishing up uh, some items from Point to Point Communications, which would be Chapter 3. And this first part here will be a little bit of review. So we talked about serial communications. If you think about that, compared to where Ray talked about parallel communications, where you send lots of things across lines. <clears throat> so in order to do that, we have time division multiplexing, statistical time division multiplexing. We have two major ways of sending, um, or at least, at least two of them that we're going to talk about, sending information using fiber, fiber optics, and it's the same idea. We can send lots of signals in, and those signals then can be put on one pipe to send to the other end, and then those signals can come out. And then when the information comes back, see so it coming back, and then go back through the pipe and get sorted back out again. So this signal coming in is the correct signal coming back out. And this in between here, you know, that could be the ocean. I mean, you know, this can be San Francisco and this can be Japan. We take those signals and send them with a high speed fiber over long distances. <clears throat> We reviewed demarcation, that point where the provider equipment connects to the customer presence equipment. What the customer owns, what the provider owns, the service provider. You know. And when we talk about that, data terminal equipment usually we have, and then there's some type of communications equipment to send that information across the medium, whatever it might be. And we talked about a CSU, DSU. All right. WAN encapsulation. When we talk about frames, we're talking about layer two. Okay, the data link layer. Then you have the physical layer that actually sends the information. So WAN encapsulation then is how we encapsulate here. So what's interesting, you know, if you had you can have these two routers use a protocol to connect and these two use something different. So our connection here to get to our connection over here use Ethernet in, Ethernet, and then we use all kinds of protocols to get it across and then bring it back out over here. So between each link we have some type of WAN encapsulation. It could be circuit switched or packet switched. We talked about those. HDLC is the typical default. PPP is the one we're working on now. Uh, slip, we will not cover that. Um, I don't even know how much that's used anymore. X, just like X.25 is no longer properly in use. Everybody's using frame relay, asynchronous transmission mode. Uh, at least those are three examples. Just to give you a little bit of an idea, X.25 used to be a very reliable protocol. It would do lots of checking and sending back and checking and sending back. Whereas frame relay is best effort. You know, it's going to send the information. It's not going to check it along the way. Um, another layer further up than the data link layer can check and ask for retransmission if you need it to. So then we get into talking about PPP. Here at the data link and physical layer, we have link control protocol and the network control protocol. Okay, that's going to communicate this way, this one's going to communicate this way. So let's take a look at specifically link control, network control protocol. Network control protocol has modules. What we use typically now would be either 
IP version 4, IP version 6. So somebody came up with a new type of um, network protocol um, that you might be able to use with that module could just be added. You know, previously there were some Apple talk around, or a lot of it at one point in time, IPX, Novell, and so forth. So we could plug in whatever module we want. Okay? Some advantages over HDLC. We have better control of the, of the link. We can authenticate. Uh, we can com compress the data and so forth. <clears throat> so, link control protocol is going to establish a session and we have those phases. Initiating the connection, make sure the link's good, and then configure the network later protocol. And there's steps here to make that connection. So, the connection. We talked about direct or circuit switched. Lease line. <clears throat> Actually, these two together. Direct and circuit switched. BPP. Service provider. They create your WAN. Connecting into the service provider. A direct circuit switch line. Depending on the band with you know how much you want and how guaranteed is that makes sense then we talk about it and you know the other option internet internet service providers connect in and that kind of looks funny <clears throat> all right PPP configuration options we can do authentication nowadays typically chat we can do compression. Here's a couple options. You need to be concerned, you know, when you compress, it's like zipping files. You compress it on one end, the cost of compression, whether it's time and so forth, to save on the bandwidth going across, and then decompressing on the other end. Okay? Now, if your link is real expensive, and you're paying, you know, based on how much data, or your link is is congested, you know, it has lots of information. Then compressing it over here and decompressing over here might not be as big a deal in order to save on the space used in your link. Multi-link is like ISDN had separate channels. You could link those together and treat them as one channel and create the virtual multi-link you can give it a group number and then you can take physical interfaces and put them on that group and it treats it as one interface just like load balancing across there and that is it for the little review